filter in, sit down and relax because we talked a little bit about it earlier. I'm going to tell a story. So it's going to go on and it's interactive and I'm using live maps that are served through the web. So sit back and just kind of take it in. And while you're watching, you might think about your organization and how you could use some of these tools and this technology in your field. All right, so it's a case study, but again, it's a story. I come from a military background, so they always told me, tell people what you're going to say, say it, and tell them what you just said. So I'm going to talk about how quickly things have evolved in surveying. And for the percentage of people in the room that don't use GIS every day, this is a part that you'll want to see. And Donna, keep me honest on the time, because I could probably talk until tomorrow. I'm very passionate about this, and I think a lot of you are too, so. If you don't really know much about GIS, these next two sections will be for you. How we build GIS in our organization, and then some history behind a traditional GIS and how it's designed. And then this paradigm shift that's actually going on right now. I'll give you a little bit of history about Frontier and how we're implementing GIS, and then during the during the slides, it's also going to be a demo. So watch for that. And I've tried to seam these in so that it is seamless. But there's going to be some toggling back and forth between the web map and my presentation. And you know, everybody in this room has done surveying, I assume. Maybe not so much of it in GIS. But I think we talk about the technology evolving, and it really has evolved. And I studied a little bit about biology and evolution, and really evolution doesn't happen slowly, it happens quickly. There's some things that happen very fast. And my background in the surveying and mapping and cartography, this was one of the first automated tools that I used. And does anybody know what this is? It's a Leroy letter set. Yeah. yeah, that was really, it came out not that long ago, and I used it in my first cartography class. Did anybody ever have a chance to pull a chain around? I have. I worked in the tech stop, Department of Transportation. We had Philadelphia Rock and Chain. Not like that one. It was a speaker earlier that talked about punch cards. My background's in programming. And you see that deck of cards there on the, uh, see right there? That's, that's a line of code. Each punch card was a line of code. And you had to have it in order and I was, taking mine from my final, and I dropped it on the floor. <laughs> that that uh, Fortran class didn't go so well. I come from a military background, and these satellites went up originally during the Cold War, and it was designed for what? What were these for? Targeting for the Soviets. So we made friends with them, and we won. So what happened to the satellites? Well, we're living proof of what happened. So we get to use those now. Now, things are really changing. And when I studied GIS and I began to really fall in love with mapping, I realized that what it gives us is a visualization tool. It gives us the opportunity to see things we couldn't see. And this is us out in the field, out in the water. I think Danny and Matt are probably in that. They're sitting in the audience. And it gives us the ability to visualize things that we couldn't see otherwise. This slide in the background is hydrographic. We get bathymetry, and then there's a shipwreck that's near the intercoastal waterway. I'll show you that in a little while. And now with the evolution of high-def scanning, it's really brought about an evolution. I mean, it's a technological evolution, and it's truly happening in our time. So I really consider myself lucky. All right, for those of you in the room, I think it's a, maybe a little under 50%. You don't use GIS every day, so for those who have GIS, go to your happy place for a second. This is GIS. It's a technology, and all it does is it integrates data with maps. So there's a relationship between points, lines, and polygons, and that's all we map on the Earth. And then the tables are the data about them. And what are the components? We always talk about GIS, but what really are they? Of course, ESRI, we know what it is, that's the software. But that's not all. It's the hardware and the peripheral devices. 
like data collectors we use every day. It's the output. It's our organization and yours. We're in the private sector. There's a lot of public sector here. I used to work in the public sector GIS, so that's part of the GIS. The professionals and the people who are associated with building the data and maintaining it. Of course, the data itself. Now, when you build GIS, it doesn't matter if you're building in the cloud or if you're building traditionally. There's a set of steps that you go through. And the first one is, what are your needs? What's the need of the organization? And you have to ask that first. It doesn't matter how you find and present that information, but what is the need of the user? Ask that. And then you go and find out what existing data is there. What processes are involved that may not already be inside GIS, but what can you embrace and include inside GIS that will help those processes? And then the tools and the products. Accuracy. I used to work for a planning department, and they mumbled a lot when they talked about their data. It didn't really matter. But what's nice about the folks in this room is what? Who, who demands the greatest amount of accuracy? We do. And engineers. So that's why I like doing this, because it pushes me more. It pushes the system more. You expect more and you demand more out of the system. Now, when you're building GIS, you need the tools. The hardware, software, the data, the people, and the network. The network. That's what we're going to eventually get to today. These things aren't cheap, and they're timely. It takes time to build them, sometimes a long time. And what are the costs? Now, keep in mind during the storyline that I'm going to have a theme that I return back to, and that's the return on the investment. Because it is costly and it takes a lot of effort and time to build these GIS, where do you get the return? What is the return? Well, for us, we see a return on our investment really twofold. The first is it takes us less time to do the work we used to do, and it costs us less. Now, once the GIS is built, what are the responsibilities and the challenges? And I've been in organizations who built GIS, and then it became apparent the amount of investment and the responsibilities to maintain it were greater than the organization could absorb, so they either outsourced that GIS or it went away. And I don't think that's the case so much now, and here's why, because it's easier to build and maintain your GIS now, because of the tools I'm going to show you. Remind me about return on the investment. I'm going to emphasize that a lot. Internet versus intranet, okay? Think about the differences. Traditionally, who in the room's working right now with a GIS that's served up through the intranet behind a firewall? I see a bunch of hands. We, we kind of, we in the frontier, we're sort of putting our hand down now. When you think about the traditional architecture, it looks a lot like that. You've got all these different PCs or nodes that are connected to a server, and your hardware and your data, they're all stored on these servers behind the firewall. They're costly to maintain, they get upgraded regularly, they crash, they require maintenance and a place to put them. Security, it's challenging, but it's all we had to work with before, so we kind of stood on the shoulders of this so we could go further. Now in the cloud, you know, the more I hear about it and talk about it and read about it, it's almost becoming second nature. So my guess is next year, it won't be called the cloud. It's just going to be GIS. I mean, things are moving at such a pace right now that the cloud, the cloud, the cloud. Well, my, the next talk I give, hopefully here in a year or two, this will be inferred. 